going to look at some geometrical properties of the conics. Uh, some of them are similar to what we looked at with the parabola last year, quarter contact, uh, reflection property, things like that. So all conics have those similar sorts of properties. Now, let's have a look at our, our quarter contact question when it comes to an ellipse. And a reminder of what the quarter contact is. All you know is the equation of the ellipse and some external point. So I've called the external point there x naught y naught. The chord of contact from that external point it would be possible to draw in two tangents. Okay. We know the equation of the tangent if I was to give p just random coordinates x1 y1 we know that that would end up with the equation x1 x on a squared y1 y on, on b squared equals 1. There would be a second tangent that we could draw in. Uh, I'll give those random coordinates x2 y2. And that tangent would be x2, x on a squared plus y2, y on b squared is equal to 1. The chord of contact is the chord that joins those two points of contact. So in other words, what is the equation of PQ? Okay. The way to do it is I can say, well, T lies on both of those lines. Now because T lies on both of those lines, when I substitute them into the equation for P, I must come up with a correct statement. And when I substitute it into the equation for Q, I must get a correct statement. So it must be true that x1, x0 on a squared plus y1, y0 on b squared is equal to 1. It must also be true that x2, x0 on a squared plus y2, y0 on b squared is equal to 1. Now we're looking for an equation of a line that both x1, y1 and x2, y2 lie on. So the equation of that line must simply be that. x naught x on a squared plus y naught y on b squared is equal to 1. Because remember, have a look at the line before. We said it's true that x naught x1 on a squared plus y naught y1 on b squared is equal to 1. So yes, it satisfies this equation when I substitute in x1, y1. We also said x naught x2 on a squared plus y naught y2 on b squared is equal to 1. So it is true that when I substitute in x2, y2 into this equation, it is correct. That is the equation of a straight line. I have a constant <coughs> times x plus a constant times y is equal to some number. So that is an equation of a line. Well, it must be PQ then because both P and Q satisfy that equation. Now, if you have a look at the equation, yet again, just like the tangent, it has the same form as the actual ellipse itself. The difference this time is x naught y naught is not actually on the ellipse, x naught y naught is the external point. And so we're not talking about the equation of a tangent now, we're talking about the equation of the chord PQ. So that would be the quickest way of finding the chord of contact. Now the hyperbola you could do in exactly the same way, you'll never guess what its equation comes up with. See, I told you. Okay. Once again, it also looks like the general equation of the hyperbola. So you'd get x naught x on a squared minus y naught y on b squared is equal to 1. So if you're trying to solve some general property question, and that question is not find the equation of the chord of contact, we can save ourselves a lot of time by just remembering that, okay, I know the chord of contact will take that same form as the ellipse. Same as with the tangent. If it's not actually a question where we're trying to show that the tangent has the equation, we can just go, okay, well I know it will take the form of the uh, ellipse or the, the hyperbola. Now the rectangular hyperbola, let's have a look at this one. This would be the way we did it last year with parametrics, if you remember. We said, okay, we'll find the equation PQ. Oh, that's X plus PQY equals CP plus Q. We then showed that the point of intersection of these two tangents, and in this case, the point of intersection would be 2CPQ and P plus Q, 2CP plus Q. But the only thing we know about this point, this question, is X naught, Y naught. The parameters P and Q, we just made up to solve the problem. So I need to get P and Q out of the equation of the chord and get X naught, Y naught in there. So I can say, oh, well, x naught must be 2c p q on p plus q, y naught is 2c on p plus q, 
So I can substitute in to my equation of a chord. And I'll get x plus, so substituting in for pq, I can make pq the subject of, which one did I make it the subject of? Ah, there was x naught. We got x naught into that one, haven't we? P plus Q, X naught, over 2C, Y, is equal to C, P plus Q. And then I substituted in Y naught, making P plus Q the subject, and substituted in for P plus Q, and we've got this lovely looking equation there, which I'm going to tidy up a bit by getting rid of the fractions. And actually, these are a little bit neat there. You've got X, Y naught, plus X naught, Y is equal to 2C squared, and whilst you might not recognise that, it again takes the form of the actual shape. Because right? remember, the actual shape is xy is equal to c squared. Well, if you look at that one and forget about the zeros there, I've got xy plus xy. Oh, that would be 2c squared. And so the, the equation of the, the um, chord, once again, takes a similar format of the... Uh, Shape it Let's look at some more geometric properties. The chord of contact from a point on the directrix is a focal chord. It doesn't matter which conic we're talking about. Pretty sure I probably just looked at the ellipse here, but it's the same for the hyperbola, same for the rectangular hyperbola, same for the parabola. So let's have a look at the ellipse. The chord of contact, well, T is on the directrix. Okay, don't know what the Y value is but I know the x value must have the uh, coordinate a on e because it's on the directrix. The chord of contact then, because we're now saying, hey, this is an external point to the, uh, the ellipse. Well, instead of being x, x naught on a squared, it's now going to be x, a on e on a squared. And so I get x over a, e plus y, y naught on b squared is 1. Substitute in, because remember, we're trying to show it's a focal chord. So there's the equation of the chord. i just got to show this goes through the focus. So let's substitute in AE naught, and hopefully I'll get a correct statement. I'll get AE over AE plus naught is 1 plus naught, and yes, indeed, that is equal to 1. So yes, the focus will lie on the chord of contact if that external point is on the directrix. Hmm, here's a more interesting one. That part of the tangent between the point of contact and the directrix will subtend a right angle at the corresponding focus. I think we need a diagram to explain this one. So there's our ellipse. We'll put it in a directrix. I've used the parametric coordinates to do this problem. So a cos theta, b sine theta. So that part of the tangent between the point of contact, p, and the directrix, T, so that part of the tangent, will subtend, remember from circle geometry what subtend means? Get two points, join it up to a third point. It will subtend an angle. So in this case, the two points of P and T, joining up to the third point, the focus, and it's telling us it should subtend a right angle. So we need to prove PST is 90 degrees, or a right angle. We know the equation of the tangent. It's in parametric form. It would end up being x cos theta on a plus y sine theta on b is equal to 1. Need that because I'm going to need the coordinates of t. t lies on the directrix. So if I substitute in a over e, we know the x coordinate. Let's make y the subject. Look at this beautiful expression for y. b outside of e minus cos theta over e sine theta we end up with. Okay, so that's t. Well, I guess the easiest way to show two lines are perpendicular, show the slopes multiply together to give negative 1. So slope PS, that's the easier one to find. So B sine theta minus 0 over A cos theta minus AE. So B sine theta over A cos theta minus E. Slope TS. Ooh, fractions on fractions. Yuck. I've made the top well, all one fraction. Well, it already is. But then I've made the bottom all one fraction as well, and then inverted and multiplied. There's some cancelling that's going to happen there. The E obviously cancels with the E. A minus AE squared. Well, let's just tidy that up. So the top is B outside of E minus cos theta. I've cancelled the E's. 
over a 1 minus e squared sine theta. Hang on. a 1 minus e squared. Oh, that's so close to something, isn't it? Remember, it was a squared 1 minus e squared. So I'll make it that. a squared 1 minus e squared, but I've got to divide it by a, of course, because I can't just change what it is. But remember, a squared 1 minus e squared was b squared. So now, playing around with that, the b squared will cancel with the b, the a will go to the top. I get a, e minus cos theta over b sine theta. Have a look at the other slope. You can see that when I multiply these two things together, everything's going to cancel nicely and leave me with negative 1. So yes, indeed, that is 90 degrees. The reflection property. This one's really cool. If you've got an ellipse, right, the tangent to an ellipse at the point P is equally inclined to the focal chords through P. You might think, so what? Let's draw it. There's our ellipse. Random point P. What we're saying is, there you go, put in the two foci, bang. <sighs> okay, can a few lines. Basically, we're saying the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. That is the reflection property. Of, of anything. Yeah. So I want to show angle TPS is equal to angle TPS dash. Apparently, and those of you that know physics are probably even screaming at me even as I speak, going, no, 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 that is not the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection. Where is the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection? Right, so it should be to the normal. But of course, the normal would be at 90 degrees. So if I can show those two are equal, then the other two must be 90 minus it. So yes, the angle of incidence would equal the angle of reflection. Let's prove those two angles are equal. I'm going to construct a third parallel line to the other two directrices. So passing through P. Now, I've also drawn a horizontal in, N and N dash. And I'm going to play with the, the property of transversals of parallel lines. So I know the ratio PT to PT dash will be the same as PN to PN dash. Right? The transversal property on parallel lines. Remember, you've got three parallel lines. doesn't matter where you draw the transversal. It will always cut them in the same ratio. Okay. Just rearranging that, I get PT over PN is the same as PT dash over PN dash. So I've just played around with that ratio. Now I'm going to use the definition of an ellipse. We know the eccentricity times the uh, distance to the um, uh, directrix is equal to the distance to the, the focus. So I can substitute in for PN, isn't it? Yes, PN and PN dash. So I now have this ratio. PT over PS over E is equal to PT dash over PS dash over E. Well, the E's will cancel. So I now just have PT over PS is equal to PT dash over PS dash. Now, what is so important about this ratio? My diagram's gone. But have a look back at the diagram. You have got two, what we now know, right angle triangles. Because we just said the angle at the focus will be a right angle. We've got a trig ratio. Yeah. So the secant, if you look at those triangles, the secant of angle SPT would be PT over PS. Right, the secant, so that's hypotenuse over adjacent. And the secant of angle S dash PT dash would be PT dash over PS dash. So I know the secant of these two angles are the same. Well, if the secant of the are the same, and they're inside a right angle triangle, so they've both got to be acute angles, they can't be different angles then. So they must in fact be the same angle. So angle SPT does equal angle S dash PT dash. <laughs> Let's jump back to complex numbers. Now that we've looked at conics, and you may remember there were some uh, questions in Patel that were asterisks at the time. 
and it said you might like to look at these later when you've done conics. So this sort of question now we can do, what is this locus? We've got the modulus of Z plus 2 plus the modulus of Z minus 2 is equal to 8. You're all looking at it, I know, and you're going, ha ha, I see what it is straight away now. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's an ellipse. Remember? We had a thing that said the sum of the focal lengths in an ellipse is equal to a constant, that constant being 2a. I've got the sum of two focal lengths here. Okay. Sum of the focal lengths of an ellipse is a constant. So, well, I didn't draw it, but let, let me show you. Remind yourself what those modulus means. Modulus of z plus 2 means the length of the line that is joining z to negative 2. I can put z anywhere. That's what we're trying to find the lockers of. Let's put z there. And there's negative 2. So I'm saying that distance plus when I join z to positive 2. So the length of the line when I join z to positive 2 is equal to a constant amount. Well, there it is. Because if I was to now draw in an ellipse, I could say I have the sum of two focal lengths of an ellipse. So I've got two distances add up together where I've joined one point to two other points, and they have this, you know, it's a constant value. So I must have an ellipse. Well, remember, it was equal to 2a. So in our problem then, 2a is equal to 8. So I know a in this ellipse is equal to 4. A, E is the focus, because I know it's centred at the origin, because one focus is 2, one is negative 2. So the centre of the ellipse must be at the origin. So A, E is equal to 2. I can work out the eccentricity. The eccentricity is a half. Uh, the only other thing I need is B. Once I know B, I, I can come up with an equation. Well, B squared is A squared, 1 minus E squared. Sub it in. B squared, I don't really need B actually, I just need B squared. B squared is 12, there's my locus. X squared on 16 plus Y squared on 12 is equal to 1. All right. So there are a couple of questions like that uh, back in Patel you might like to uh, try. Uh, did I list them there? Yeah, I think, is it those ones, the 6E? I think it's probably those ones in 6E. Oh, the 4N, of course, yes. So. All right. I